Hey, happy Thursday, everybody. Good morning to you. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, we're about to have a triple dip La Nina, which means more of a drought coming to our country, mostly in the west, southwest. After we get some rainfall, there is more rainfall coming, plus a more intense hurricane season that we're going to have this year. So if you're liking these seasonal updates, hit that like button. Let me know that you want more of these type of updates. If you've never been here before, make sure you subscribe. I am all year along. Let's get into the information. Now, I do have these links in the description so you can go read about all this yourself. But now La Nina heads for a rare triple dip dampening of our global temperatures. And as you can see right here for the Eastern Pacific, it is well below average temperatures. And usually with all this sinking air going on, it messes with the upper level winds over here in the tropical Atlantic. Way less wind shear so these storms could strengthen very quickly without a lot to maybe suppress it. Plus well above average temperatures going on. And that's going to be going on pretty soon. And this is why it matters. Because La Nina, which is characterized by cooler than average sea surface temperatures in the equatorial Pacific Ocean, has repercussions for the Atlantic hurricane season. Such events tend to weaken upper level winds over the Atlantic Ocean, creating more favorable conditions for tropical storms and hurricanes to form and strengthen. So for this reason, more forecasting groups in the public and private sectors are predicting an above average hurricane season for this year. And you can see right here that it says the South Pacific may be facing a potential third appearance of La Nina in a row, which could bring more rainfall to an already saturated eastern Australia and continue the trend of intense hurricane seasons along the east coast of the United States and drought conditions in the country's southwestern states. This rare occurrence has only happened twice since 1950. And so far, this is our drought monitor, and you can see where all the extreme and exceptional drought is. Now, you're going to get some more rainfall for your monsoon season for New Mexico, for Arizona. Pretty soon, it's about to be even more drought for y'all, especially California. I see California getting no precipitation within the next two weeks. Plus, we're about to go into a very high ridge on the western side of the U.S. that will keep the big high pressure on the western side of the U.S. above average temperatures while it slides down to the mid-Atlantic on the east side of the U.S. And that's where these ridge rider storms are going to go. So as you look at your EPO, East Pacific Oscillation, you can see we're about to go into a very high positive on our jet stream. And this is going to bring a big high pressure on the western side of the U.S., bring warmer temperatures, above average temperatures but it's also going to bring these storms down into the mid-Atlantic and the south and southeast. And this is where our pattern is going to be for quite some time. And this is the EPS. This is the Euro medium to long range forecast confidence. And it has it all the way until the 7th pretty soon, starting all the way until the 16th, 15th or 16th, that we're going to be in this crazy pattern. And this is what that looks like. As you look at your 200 millibar height, you can see right when you get around June 11th, you get a little high ridge before then, just like they say, June 7th. But it really peaks high right around 11th through the 15th. We get a big high pressure swirling over here. And this makes this ridge go way high, just like I just showed you on the EPO. And this will bring storms down here to the mid-Atlantic. And this is going to be all ridge riders that's going to ride that jet stream in the same area the whole time. So we're going to see this pattern continue for the next five to ten days. And then as it goes closer, it brings it a little bit further towards the southeast with these storms. So we're going to see a lot of precipitation start adding up. So what it's going to do is essentially is going to flip flop. So while you have this big high pressure on the east coast, just swirling around, when we go into this very high ridge on the west coast, then it's going to flop to where we have the high pressure on the west coast. And you can be average to below average temperatures on the east coast. But that big high ridge is going to bring a lot of problems. So when you look at your temperatures for the next 6 to 10 days, you can see how your average in a white, low below average in a blue as that little bit of that cool front comes down. But you're well above average in the south and the west side of the U.S. for the next 6 to 10 days. Now the good news is in the next 6 to 10 days, you are going to be seeing more precipitation for your monsoon season for the southwest central plains and it will be a lot of storms on the east side of the u.s as this ridge goes down towards the mid-atlantic this is where you're going to see a lot of storms just flinging off the east coast 
In the next eight to 14 days, this pattern is still going to continue. You're still going to have some more rainfall for your monsoon season, a little bit above average. Also for the southeast because of the ridge pattern we're going into. And you can see just within the next five days, the pattern, a big high ridge and everything comes down towards the east and the southeast. Now all this pink is only an inch and a half of rainfall. It looks like it's worse than it actually is. But once you start getting toward this red and these yellows, that gets towards three and four inches of rainfall within the next five days. But all these systems that will be forming off the east coast will be going straight out into the Atlantic. There's no curving coming around. There could be some winds along the coast. But you also can see here that typically every three to four years, water temperatures in this zone will oscillate from warmer to cooler periods, with some periods simply near average, known as the neutral periods. Now, right now, it is unusually cool by spring standards, and as of May 4th, the central and eastern equatorial Pacific Ocean water was 1.2 degrees Celsius cooler than average, and one degree Celsius is a big difference in the ocean guys the coolest in may in 22 years according to a tropical scientist the coolest in may in 22 years and april's anomaly was 1.1 degree cooler than average and it was tied for the record cool anomaly with 1950 that's how far back we're going with making these records again guys so the last time it was this cool in April was 1950, and the last time it was this cool in May was 22 years ago. So typically when you get a La Nina season, you see it's right here in the Pacific, it is cool and dry. Fewer hurricanes right here by Western Mexico, but for the tropical Atlantic, it's worse. It makes it more hurricanes, weaker vertical wind shear and trade winds, less atmospheric stability. So you can also see here by scientists that La Nina typically corresponds with a more active Atlantic hurricane season because of the cooler waters of the equatorial Pacific Ocean end up causing less wind shear along the weaker low level winds in the Caribbean Sea. Now La Nina can also enhance rise in motion over the Atlantic basin, making it easier for these storms to develop. So last year we had Storm Anna, this was in May. Then we had Storm Bill, this was in June. We also had Tropical Storm Claudette in June last year. Tropical Storm Danny, that was also in June last year. But we got Hurricane Elsa in July last year. Then we got Tropical Storm Fred in August. We got Hurricane Grace in August. Things really picked up in August. Hurricane Henry in August last year. And Hurricane Ida in August last year. And just like August last year was where a big hurricane started forming, this is what it looks like it's going to be for this season as well because of the La Nina. And I'm showing that right now we got the dust. You can see the big plume of dust. But pretty soon we're going to have a lot of strong storms coming straight off the coast of Africa through the MDR, and they're going to come off powerful. Now, right now, we're still in that block that we last discussed about. We got these big plumes of dust coming through all through July. Even GFS tried hinting around the 15th and 16th that something could be forming up late in the Caribbean, maybe the Gulf of Mexico. But you can see we have so much of this dust. <laughs> Nothing is going to form in that area. It will be late July or in August, just like last year. And you can see when you look at your potential velocity anomaly, according to the GFS, that in our region, all we have is a bunch of sinking air all the way towards the end of July. We have a few little ones that could spark up something very weak, probably get pushed out towards the Pacific. And since it's cooler below average temperatures, it won't grow into anything much. You can also see when you look at the pressures that we still have this big high pressure that's blocking our Caribbean, blocking our MDR. Plus, we have all this dust coming off the coast of Africa. There is nothing still happening for a while. We're still on this break. As of right now, we're still in this long break for the tropics. If anything forms, it will form up close, real close in the Gulf, real close to the East Coast. And you can see this with the long range of the Euro as well. We have a lot of sinking air in our region, a couple of maybes that is going on. But as you get towards the beginning of August, they're going to start coming off the coast of Africa. And you see this one's coming off strong. And as you go from the beginning of August all the way to the 10th of August, it's already moving to the western side of the MDR. And look how strong that is. It's already coming off strong. 
and it's going to be less wind shear. This is going to be a big chance to get our first major hurricane in August. And remember, our hurricane season goes all the way until November 30th. So they're going to start coming off strong when we get into August, and it's going to continue that way probably for quite some time. I will keep you updated. So usually in July, we could get some form up by Eastern Caribbean over here by the Western MDR, and a lot of them form up close on the East Coast and the Gulf of Mexico. But in August, August is where it starts to really start strengthening up. We really get our warm temperatures. Gulf of Mexico is already very hot already. But look where everything forms up for August. Everything gets, starts getting really intense, not only for the Eastern Caribbean, but it goes right towards our Gulf or right towards our East Coast. So this is going to start strengthening once we get to the end of July, beginning of August, we're going to start having some quick problems coming out of the tropics. So I just wanted to give you all a quick update on what it was looking like the next season we're coming into. It looks like it's going to be another La Nina, guys, and that is a triple dip. That right there is very rare. And not only is a triple dip La Nina very rare, it is also looking like we're probably going to have a very intense winter that we're going into after hurricane season. So... It's some intense weather patterns that we're about to come into, guys, all because of this La Nina pattern. And it is really going to affect our tropics. So God bless all of you. Thank you so much for visiting my channel today. Sorry I was under the weather for the last couple of days. I don't know what it was, but God restored me. Amen. I'm fine as rain now. <laughs> now let's start off our Thursday with a little word from our Father. Amen. From God. Psalm. 32. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silence, my bones wax old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me, my moisture is turned into the drought of summer, Selah. And remember, Selah means think about what you just heard. So let's do that again. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer, Selah. I acknowledged my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Selah. <laughs> For this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto them. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Selah. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. Amen. Have a very great day today, everybody. God bless all y'all that's been going through these storms these last few days. Power outages are still fluctuating everywhere. I pray the best for you. God bless you. Thank you again <laughs> for visiting my channel. I do appreciate every single one of you. And all power. All glory. Does go to Yahweh. God of Jacob. Our Father, our God. And He can restore you. Just pray to Him. For He controls the waters. 
<laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have a very blessed day, everybody.